everyone, my name is Allie. I'm the patient coordinator here at Dr. Nico's office. And here I am with the one and only Dr. Nico. And so we are gonna be answering just some of the popular questions that we get in our consultations, specifically with breast augmentation. We get a ton of questions. So one of those is, you know, how much fullness can I expect? Or we like to say the cleavage, right? How much fullness can I actually achieve with a breast augmentation? Can you answer yeah, that? Yeah, it's a very common question, a uh, great question. Not a simple one, right? Because patients have different build. They have different frame and they have different spacing between the breast and they have different muscles. So it depends on how we do the breast augmentation. But true cleavage really is achieved when you wear some type of bra, right? And you push the breast together. We know that most of the time when we do breast augmentation, we like to put the implants underneath the muscle because it offers a few advantages and we can go over those advantages in another video. But what you need to understand is that the pectoralis major muscle, the muscle that we go underneath, spans it from your, starts from the, up in your arm and it goes across the middle. So technically, the pectoralis major muscle does what? It pushes the breast implant down and out. So technically, when you go underneath the muscle, you're getting less cleavage. When I see someone that comes in and want really full cleavage, then I tell them, look, if you want a really full cleavage, you have to go above the muscle. Mm -hmm. But then most people are like, no, I hurt under the muscles a lot better. I don't want to go you know, above the muscle, which is fine, but they need to understand that the muscle does want to separate it. And the second thing is we can choose the different implant options. You know, they come in different profile. So if they want really full cleavage, then we are, you know, I'm a little bit more aggressive. I try to dissect in the middle a little bit more, but we use ultra high implants. We use really like a cohesive type, the soft touch, or the gummy bear. That's a little sturdier, and that offers a little bit more resistance to the muscle. And using those ultra high implant or high profile implant, it pushes against the muscle a little bit more. And then obviously if you're going bigger implants, then you're really stretching that muscle out. But technically, if someone really wants full cleavage and you know you gotta wear some kind of support, that's that's how you really get true cleavage. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that the patient have to understand is the shape of their rib cage. I was gonna right. ask about the rib yeah. cage. And so yeah. you, you see so many different variations. Yes. Someone may be more convex, someone may be more concave. Now, if someone is concave, meaning like their kind of rib cage kind of come in a little bit, mm -hmm. then it's kind of easy for the impact to kind of fall together. But if they're more convex, then they naturally want to fall apart. So explaining all this to patients helps them understand, look, yeah, you know, because they come in, everyone comes in with different expectations, they, they show pictures, and then when they show pictures that I know what they expect, then I can really explain them, look, you know what, your, your rib cage is kind of far apart, and you, maybe your sternum is a little wide. So seeing you on each patient individually helps me determine how much cleavage I can achieve for them. So knowing how, what they want and what they can achieve is by really examining each patient. So how do we really control cleavage? Well, we can do like just a recap, They're using different implants uh, option, different shapes implant, different size, and then consider going subfascial or subglandular, meaning going above the muscle. I mean, people think there are some advantages of going underneath the muscle, but you know, there are some advantages going subglandular too, because you do have a little bit fuller cleavage. And if I place the pocket correctly, you know, you're relatively safe and you don't really have to worry about more sagging over time. So we really have to take all those factors into play and make the, the right decision for you. Yeah, and these are all things that you really don't think about all the time when you're coming in as no. a patient. Yeah. Um, so we don't always look at our rib cage and what's asymmetrical. No. So no. that's the importance of the consultation, right? right. And right. I think you just nailed it with all the things to keep in mind. Right. Really People come in and they just show a picture. This is what I want. But who looks at their rib cage? Who looks at their sternum? <laughs> when they're the face of the breast? <laughs>